So here we're going to go through the forklift training. Uh, the course objectives for this, uh, number one, uh, is going to be um, understanding the unique hazards of forklift operation, right? And the safe um, movement uh, during uh, picking, stacking, uh, again, lifting things off the shelves, right? What are some things you need to take into consideration? Um, and then ultimately, um, we're going to make sure that that we know how to make sure they're safe, right? Previous inspections. So who needs this forklift training? Anyone that operates a fork truck, right? Again, they're known as many things. Uh, tow motors, forklift, lift trucks. Uh, if you go by OSHA standard, they're powered industrial trucks, right? So there, there's many names for them. They've been around for years. Uh, they, they help us get our job done. So why is this training necessary? Keep safe. Keep us safe, right? And prevent people from entering, getting injured, uh, damage to property. So the most of all, we want to make sure we're protecting each other, right? The pedestrians, uh, the driver, uh, and so forth. So there's approximately 100 deaths and 38,000 injuries every year. Uh, from tow motor operation. Uh, so, so again, we want to make sure that we understand uh, the safe operation of the tow motor. So we talked about operating a car. Is it, it's different than operating a forklift, right? Mm -hmm. So what are some of those differences? Steers from behind. It steers from behind, right? Where's the car steer from? Or most cars, right? From the front. So with that steering from the rear, what's that create? A sharper turn. A sharper turn also creates a, uh, your your tail end, right? It goes way out and could potentially hit someone. Yeah, the, the tow motor weighs about four uh, forty thousand pounds, right? Depending on the size of your tow motor, car averages two to six thousand pounds, right? So a huge, huge weight difference. Uh, forklift has a high center of gravity, right? Changes constantly. I'm sorry? The center of gravity changes constantly. And it changes constantly depending on what you're doing. So a car has a low center of gravity. Forklift, you've got low visibility, right? You've got that mask in front of you and, and, and all kinds of stuff around. Whereas in a car, you've got wide visibility, right? You've got a big windshield. Now, you don't have things to do with uh, blocking vision and all that good stuff. So, so again, visibility is a big issue. Uh, again, especially on a lift truck, because you got, I mean, you're operating in a, in a good, crowded environment, right? You got people walking around, you get people like me coming in, right? That's not used to being in this area. Uh, so it's important to watch out for them and, and, and so forth. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Again, so, we talked about that tail swing, right? This kind of gives you an idea of, of an automobile has that wide turn radius, right? You're not going to be able to turn on a dot. Whereas a, a tow motor, again, is very short, which creates that, that, that wide tail, uh, tail uh, spin. So, again, these are our four lists in green circle. Uh, we'll actually go over yours. We'll go down and, and talk about what tools of the truck you have. We'll look at all of the different components and so forth. One thing that's very important and is on your tow motor is the right. data plate. What's that data plate tag? Tells you about the truck. Tells you about the truck. What's the most important? Weight capacity. Weight capacity, right? So we know how much we're lifting. And is it going to safely lift it? Uh, and we don't want to get out there and all of a sudden the back end of our truck is, is which is another good indication of weight capacity, right? But we don't want that to happen. So we want to know what our weight capacity is and then what the weight of what we're lifting is. So, previous daily inspection, uh, this is the one we have at, at, up, in, up in Atlanta, at Brownsville. And then we've designed it where this stays with your truck on a weekly basis, right? You just have to do the inspection every week. Uh, and then turn it in on a weekly basis so we have evidence that the inspection was done. Because if there was an incident, guess what's the first thing people look for? Inspection, right? Did you inspect your truck? Was the truck safe? I'm sorry. If something, <laughs> if something was found, did we address it as a company and, and make it safe for you? So check engine levels, hydraulic oil levels, radiators, air cleaners, fire extinguishers, right? Uh, break up backup devices, 
uh, make sure their bolts are missing. They can look at the mast. Is it working appropriately? Mm -hmm. So, so, so we'll go through a tow motor inspection. Um, again, we want to inspect it before each use or after each shift, right? So we come in every morning. What's the? When we're getting ready to operate our tow motor. What's the first thing we want to do? We want to inspect it, right? So, so again, we, we want to make sure that we look at the hydraulic fluids, check out the, the oil levels, and you want to check all the hoses, right? To make sure that they're, they're in good shape. Make sure they're not ready to burst on you. Uh, check the pliability of them, right? Um, so, and just the general overall, what's the engine looking like, right? Uh, type thing. So, so you want to check the engine out. So again, yeah, we want to check for leaks in the hydraulic cylinders. Take a look at the hoses, right? Take a look at the forks. Make sure they're in good shape. Take a look at the chains, right? Yeah. Make sure that they're they're going to they're working appropriately, um, and so forth. So um, again, look at the condition of the of the mast. Is it damaged? Is it broken? Uh, and so so that way we know it's going to last us through the shift. Check the gas line, right? Check the, the propane tank. Make sure it's got propane in it if you can, right? Make sure it's, it's open. Uh, listen, for, listen for leaks, right? Kind of make sure you don't smell anything. Check to make sure the fire extinguisher's here. And then, um, so we've given it a good, uh, good overview. Taking a look at underneath, right? <clears throat> make sure that there's no leaks underneath. Um, and so, so why we've got it started, many of you get in that seat, what are you going to do? You just put your seatbelt on, right? So the light's working. So you're going to check the, the functions of the, of the lift, right? Does everything go up appropriately? And kind of get to know the controls, especially if you use different trucks, right? Because every truck's going to be a little bit different. So it's moves smoothly, right? So it's doing good, in good shape. A pretty tall one. Oh wow! So you also want to check the movement of the truck, right? Put it and make go forward. Make sure it's going to move smoothly. Check the brakes out. A back arm alarm works, right? Again, always park it with the forks down, tilted back, right? So nobody's going to be tripping. Is the rollover protection in good shape? Again, look at the tires, right? Make sure they're in, in, in decent shape. Make sure there's no big chunks out of it. Adjusting the forks, right? Because you want to make sure your forks are going to fit in underneath the load. So when you're adjusting these, you want to be careful not to pinch your fingers on those, right? Again, check the data plate. Make sure it's here. It has to be on here. Or what do you do? You can't run it, right? You take it out of service, call the forklift company, give them the model number, all that good stuff, and they can send you a new data plate, right? So we want to make sure that data plate is in place. Again, safe forklift operation. No passengers allowed, right? Tow motors are designed for one person. There are some that may have two, two seats on them, uh, but most generally you're not gonna find those. Uh, no riding on the floors, right? No, no lifting people on the floors. Uh, so no passengers. Keep hands and arms inside the cab area. Uh, wear your seatbelt at all times, right? Every tow motor should have a seatbelt. It's designed for you to be wearing it, so wear your seatbelt. Handling moving loads, again, check the capacity of the truck. How much material can I lift? Does that capacity change if, if you have the material further up the forks? Yes. Does it change depending on the size of the load, right? Um, and so forth. So, so again, check the capacity. Uh, check the load weight and stability. If the load's not marked, uh, again, contact the supervisor. Uh, 
uh, live to look one to two inches off the, the ground, right? And if you do start to, to build, then it's too big, right? But most of all, we want to know, strap the load uh, as you're moving it, that way nothing falls off, right? So, fulcrum, or the pivot point. Uh, the front wheels of the forklift are the fulcrum point, right? So you got your forks in front, you got your tail in the back, right? So, so again, we always want the tail to be heavier than the front, right? So again, the rear fork, uh, the rear of the fork truck has counterweights uh, to help set off that weight uh, that you're picking up. So we want to make sure that, that we, um, again, understand that the that's what that um, those counterweights are for. The unloaded forklift is less stable, all the weight is in the rear, right? So uh, when the forks are loaded, the weight in the, on the forklift and load are, are uh, more evenly balanced. Sort of like the scales, right? So, so again, if we have something on the forks, our truck is going to be more balanced and more stable. So we want to keep that in mind as we're traveling around. When the load outweighs the counterweight, the forklift can tip uh, forward when it's raised, right? So again, tilt forward so it's pretty hard to knock you out and knock you around, right? So again, stability. The closer uh, the center of gravity is to the, um, well, BC is the, the more stable the forklift is, right? So again, the more, the closer that that load is to the, to the center, the more stable it is, right? So, so we wanna make sure that we, when we pick up load, we keep it as far back on the force as possible. Even tilt the mass back a little bit, keep that, keep that load there uh, as we're raising it. So where do we want our force when we're, when we're at a load on our truck? Close to the ground as possible. As close to the ground as possible, right? Because what happens is you raise that, that load. It tips. It tips, and it's going to cause your stability to be, to be off center, right? Uh, so you want to have that load as close to the ground as possible. So tipping the forklift, what should you do? You want to stay in the truck and lower load if possible and, and hold on, right? And brace yourself. Because what happens if you jump out of the truck? Well, I'm going to get crushed. The truck is going faster than you are, right? And that the protective roll, uh, uh, roller, the rubber, the rubber red protection the roll is going to hit you, right? Load centering. It shows a picture, you got a small box in the back, you got a high, tall box in the front. It's not a good thing to do, right? Again, that's going to cause your center of gravity to be off. So you want to put the heaviest weight, the tallest part, or the tallest uh, piece, and you've got your center of gravity. So again, load centering. Uh, again, for well, the center of the, uh, the load, it should be 24 inches, right? Again, that's not always going to be perfect. Especially here, our parts aren't perfect. Or, um, or most of our parts on pallets. So, so, so again, it's easier to control with that, right? So again, we want to make sure that that we keep the um, oh, center of gravity, everything to the, as close to the center as possible. Picking up a load. Again, approach the load uh, straight on with the force uh, in the travel position. Stop when the four tips are approximately one foot away from the load. Again, double the force to, to the area where you want to put the force right. And then slowly put the force in underneath the, that material. Again, you always want to keep your, your force as close to the road as possible or as far as possible. Uh, look over your both shoulders to make sure you clear and slowly back out uh, one foot, right? Uh, if you're picking up off the shelves, once you back out that one foot, what, you, what are you going to do? You want to lower the load, right? Never turn up that load in the air. Because what that, what does that create? Suspense stability, right? So you, uh, setting down the load, you can drive the location, square up the load area, uh, stop about a foot away, level the force and slowly drive forward. You want to lower the load, uh, tilt the force slightly forward, so that way you can pull them out appropriately, right? And then, um, and then again, back out slowly watching out behind you for pedestrians, right? Driving with the load, travel with the load tilted slightly back for stability. Travel with the load at proper height, four to six inches uh, at four tips. 
two to four inches in, at the heels. Uh, drive in, in uh, control, in other words, slow, right? Uh, drive, in, uh, drive in reverse if you can't see over the load, right? So if that load is too high and you can't see over it, go drive in reverse. Don't lift the load until you can see under it, right? Because yeah. what's that going to do? Create instability. We made a new word, I think. Uh, so, we accomplished something today. Driving up inclines. Uh, always drive with the, the heavier uh, or less stable end of the forklift pointing up the incline. Uh, if the forklift is loaded, uh, drive forward up the incline uh, with the load. If it is loaded, if you have load on it, also you're going to back down, right? Go in reverse down the ramp. So, you always want that, that load up, and, uh, up, up, up as high as possible. Down that ramp. If it's not loaded, uh, drive forward down the ramp and drive reverse going up the ramp. Various surfaces, we probably have all of these around here, right? We got ice, we get ice every so often, right? Especially in the mornings in the wintertime. Uh, mud, <laughs> do we ever have mud? Nah. Oh, no, that is not. <laughs> so now we all live in the same day. <laughs> Gravel, uh, sand, soft dirt. Uh, what other driving conditions might you encounter here? Yeah, concrete. 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 Snow. Snow. Had it a few times, right? So, so again, so you want to keep those services in mind, uh, and that way, it, it, and correct your driving habits uh, for each of those services. Pedestrians. Believe it or not, they always have their driveway, right? Even on in front of Target, right? Although people don't believe that. <laughs> they want to drive right through those yellow lines that we see again, a speedway. Um, but so again, yeah, pedestrians always have their driveway. Slow down at intersections, okay? Make sure you see people. Uh, look before backing. Uh, use your horn when, when uh, coming around blind corners and blind intersections. Uh, check mirrors at intersections that they present in the workplace. Um, and never let anyone travel under the forks. Those forks are up, you do not go under those forks. Even if you're the operator and you're, you're correcting the load, right? Just go up and have it. Hydraulics can bust at any time, right? Even if they're the best, uh, they are well maintained, you just never know. Because again, when we're inspecting them, it's always. Can we inspect the inside of them? No. So we don't know what's going on inside all the time. So, again, changing propane tanks to smoking. Uh, shut off the cylinder valve, right? Uh, before turning uh, turning off the forklift. Uh, load the propane. The liquid propane is approximately negative 40 degrees. Right? We talked about that ice and the pedaling, right? So, so, what's the best thing to do to wear when we're using it? Chambers, gloves, right? Uh, so make sure to protect our hands. Uh, so make sure the uh, pressure relief valve points straight up uh, when replacing the tank. <laughs> when you park your forklift, what's the proper way to park it? The forks down. The forks down and tilt it forward, right? So that way it presents less of a tripping hazard. There's still a tripping hazard. Trust me, I've been there about that. Um, so you want to make sure that they're down. And you never leave the, floor, the truck unattended with the load in the air. We should, whenever you leave that truck, especially if you can't see the truck where you're going, you should turn it off, right? If you're, I'm sorry, and set the parking brake, right? If you're going to be more than 25 feet from the truck at any time, then you need to make sure it's turned off, okay? Again, don't block exits, right? All of our exits are marked, don't block them. That's our way out of an emergency. Uh, don't block fire extinguishers, right? How much room is supposed to be around a fire extinguisher? Mm -hmm. Three foot on mm -hmm. all sides. It should be well on every machine you're running. It should be a fire extinguisher on every machine you're running. But if you're out in, this, in, out in the warehouse here, we got fire extinguishers around, right? We don't want to block those just in case of emergency. Again, in conclusion, forklifts are more hazardous than most people uh, usually uh, perceive them to be, right? It's a heavy piece of equipment. It's a lot of 
a lot of power behind that forklift, right? So we want to make sure that we that we understand how it works. Pre-use inspections must be performed at each beginning of each shift. Uh, so we want to make sure that it's safe and it's going to operate appropriately when, when you're doing it, operating. Uh, the operator must always be on the lookout for hazards and pedestrians. <laughs>